Naomi, Naomi from Willow and Fink. Um, I just thought I'd come on today and show you how to make a faux rust finish on any of your projects. Um, we can do it today with using acrylic paints and with some sort of chalky style paint. So I will just pull the camera down and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so I'm just going to be using a canvas today um, and then I'll be using some, just some basic acrylic paints that I had lying around uh, and some orange. I didn't have any teal so I'll just try blue. Okay so what we'll do we'll just put some paints onto a, a palette. So we've got brown. So basically what we do we just get a brush get the oldest gnarliest mankiest looking brush you've got um, one with splayed sort of bristles seems to work a lot better and then all I do is we just get the brush and we light it full of paint and we just pounce onto our surface the reason why it's really good to use a gnarly brush uh, is because it will give you sort of a lumping uh, effect on it. So all we do is we just um, just pounce, pounce, pounce with the black paint or a dark grey if that's what you have. I'll only do half the canvas um, in the acrylic because then I'll sw swap it around and we'll do it with the chalk paint. But you can pretty much do any, any paint with this method. Okay, so we just pounce it around, pounce, 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 just like that. So no rhyme or reason, just nice and rough looking. If you are wanting to uh, use your paints and you don't want it so shiny, you can dull down your acrylic paints using something like um, a plaster powder or even a fine talcum powder. I don't... Um, recommend using cornstarch or corn flour because it's a food product and it will um, deteriorate in your in your artwork okay so we have the black now we go over to the brown so you're just getting a little bit of brown that might be a little bit too much if there's too much on your brush just pounce it off onto uh, your palette and then we just do a bit of brown so you sort of it's probably I don't know if you can see that it's a little bit maybe a little bit hard to see but there's some black and there's some brown on there and all you're doing is just adding some brown to your black okay so if you look on the palette here you can see that where I've mixed the black and the brown together it's already got some sort of a a rusting effect on it and that's what we're after so again you just keep going until you find um, you get sort of the design pattern that you like you so it can be more black it can be more brown it's entirely up to you depending on how you are wanting your rust to look so if you're wanting to look at a little bit more brown then we just add more brown and we just pounce along and we have it looking like that. So you can see sort of there's some black uh, and some brown. And then you just keep pouncing, pouncing, pouncing until you get to the effect that you want. Then what you can do is you can add a little bit of orange. So you've got the black and you've got the brown and then rust normally has an orange in it. So we'll just pop a little bit of orange onto our board so we don't want a lot of orange just a little bit okay oh, can't get the lid on okay so again oops, has got some dry bits of okay so again same brush we don't clean it we just dab with our orange and we just just keep dabbing until we get the desired effect if you're wanting to clean your brush you can um, as you can see here the black and the brown and the orange is mixing together to get a rusting look um, and that would also be great for Halloween okay so anyway we've got the black the brown and the orange again we just add more orange tap 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 and we just keep pouncing until we get the effect that we want 
Okay, so generally I would let the paint dry a little bit before um, before mixing the colours. So that's probably a little bit too black for my liking. So again, we just keep adding colours until we get the effect that we like. Uh, it will. It, sometimes it can take a while. Sometimes you can be lucky and snag it straight away. Other times you just keep at it. And the more layers that you do, also the more texture that you get. So now we've got more of a bit more of a brown. I'm having trouble with the lighting to actually be able to see, but that looks fine to me. So again, sort of like the blacks, the browns, we can add in. I'll dry this brush a little bit and so if we get some more orange onto it. Okay. Um, and then we just get some orange and then we just tap the orange onto it and we just go tap tap and basically it's just a matter of just tapping until you get the desired effect so there we go so that's quite deeply um, textured there if we're wanting to we could add a bit of turquoise to it as well okay um, and so I don't have any teal for this, but what I do have is I have a bit of blue, so we'll just use that for the moment. So I'll just put a couple little dabs on for that. As I said, normally I do prefer to sort of let the acrylics dry a little bit before adding all the colours. So we have that, and then we just dab our blue onto our brush, and we can just slightly dab 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 so we don't want it overly bright or if you did you can um, just add some more blue so I do want to add a bit more blue to this so I'll add some blue here and then in a minute we will try and do it do the same with some chalk paint the joy about chalk paint is that it will actually dry a lot faster and work better for us okay so we've got the black the brown a little bits of blue we'll add a little bit more okay so we can overemphasize it if we want to so we can sort of add it heavy like that and then just keep pouncing it in and again you just keep going until you get the effect that you like okay so there we go so that's a bit more of a, a blue so if we wanted some patina uh, and then if we wanted to we could always add a little bit more orange if we thought we wanted to make it a little bit more rustier and again it's just laying down the layers of paint okay so that's got some I picked up at some blobs of black on that one but that's great because that's added more texture uh, and then you can see I might just add some more because it's mixed with the black and again, it's just playing with it until you get the effect that you want. And there we go. So we've got that one there. Okay, so we just, again, just keep laying down paint until you get what you like. Sometimes it can be more orange, it can be more black, more blue, depending on what you're going for. So what we'll do now, we'll swap it around. Okay, and then I'll lay down some chalk paints and they should hopefully dry for us a little bit better, a little bit faster, so then we can get the effect a little bit better. Okay, so I will just dry my brush. So we'll just dip into the into the, the tub of chalk paint, or chalky style paint that I made. Okay, so again, we've got this gnarly brush. We're just pouncing, pouncing, pouncing. When you're using the thickened paint, you can get a bit more texture as well. So you get some little nodes, nodules of, of paint. So we've got that. So that looks like that's a nice coverage of the chalk paint. So this is just, as I said, it's just a paint that I got from the local hardware and that I thickened um, for, the, for my purposes of stenciling and painting and I get really good texture. Um, so that's there, so that's nice, that's a nice base coat. 
So then I've got, I'll just put the lid on that. Okay, so I don't know if this will be dark enough, but we will give it a go. Okay, okay so I will just offload this brush with the black. Okay, so just give that a bit of a blow, but I don't think it's going to really uh, help that much. Okay, because it is still quite damp. But then the, being slightly damp is good because then the colours will mix together. On the edge here, I can see that it's already starting to dry. But where I've done these, um, these colours, uh, this black in the thicker, it's actually taking a while to dry. So again, we just load up our brush and we just, just pounce it. There is quite a um, distinction of colours. So that's great. Okay, so we've mixed the black and the browns together. So you can see that they're looking quite nice. They're sort of homogenized a little bit, but you can still see the black and the brown. Again, if you don't like what you're seeing, you just lay down another layer of black or you can add in another color and see, and you just play with the colors and you just build them up. Just load our brush up with the paint pounce it out a little bit if you overload the brush that's no problem you can just go over it again okay so I've got a bit of a rust happening here so you see sort of the orange is there so again we're just playing with this that's probably a little bit too orange but as I'm saying all we do is we then go okay that's too orange I've made a mistake I don't like it right okay I'll just add a little bit more black to it and go over it and then all you're doing is just layering your paints until you get the effect that you want so here we go okay so I've had too much brown or sorry too much orange on that corner then you see I've added some black and it's just dulled it down so the only three basic colors that you need is black brown and an orange and then all you are doing is just playing with the colors, layering them down and just uh, mixing them up. If you dab too much, they then become one mix of colors. Again, I would normally dry this in between the layers just ever so slightly. But there we go. So we've got our black. We've put a bit, bit more brown in if we wanted to make a bit more brown. Maybe an orangey brown may be better. So maybe we could sort of mix a brown and an orange together. Get a bit creative with our colours. It's paint. And if you don't like what happens when you mix the colours, you just start again. Okay, so with this one, we've got it more of a, a brownie, a brownie colour now. Obviously, when it dries, it does lighten a little bit um, and you get more of a, a better effect. So that's there. I go, oh no, now I think I might want a bit more orange. I haven't put enough in. So again, we just get the brush, dip it in, and then just dance the paintbrush around until we get the color that we want. So possibly that orange is not bright enough. So we could possibly get a bit of the acrylics. So we've got this. Okay, so that's probably working a little bit better. Okay, so that's giving us rust. So I'll just do it in this corner here so you can see. Okay, so this one is it going to be a bit more of an um, orangey, rusty colour. This one's sort of like black and brown. And then what we'll do, we'll add a little bit of patina because patina is always good. Okay, so we'll just put a little bit, I don't know, over here. Brush, and again, we'll just pop it over onto this side. And, okay, so yeah, possibly a little bit too much there, but that's okay. So we've got, now we've got the patinaed side of it. So this would be, um, uh, if you were like a bronze statue. So, you know, when you see bronze statues, they're all brown and yuck, and then they've got the uh, verdigris on it. Um, 
then you could sort of do that like a, a faux bronze color okay so we'll just add that so if that was going to be a bronze we've got the teal there um, so you can see here with the um, acrylic paints it's slowly starting to dry um, and you've got the gnarly colors on there and then with this one we've done the rust we've done more of a bronzy patina and here we've got more of a rust we've got some brushes some bronze on our brush okay and we'll go maybe down the middle Oh, yeah, oh, that works quite well too. We've got some bronze, which is sort of working. Okay. Okay, so we can work that in. And again, as it dries, it will look different. Okay, so here we go. So this is with the um, copper that we just did. Okay, so we've got, this is, down here was when we did it with the acrylic paints. Down here was when we did it with the um, chalk. This, so this is the chalk paint side. This is if we wanted to do it as a more, oops, I've got my finger on it, uh, more of a bronzy color, if it was like a bronze statue. And then in the middle, we've done some copper. And then sort of on the edge, we've done some orange. So again, as they dry, they will look a little bit different. Okay, so um the co colors have mixed together a little bit because they are wet so i may have to let that dry so with these so when you're doing a rust effect your three colors that you really need are black a brown and an orange um, depending on the color of your um, brown and your orange will also determine the effect that you get with your rust um, Generally, a brown that has a little bit of orange in it would probably work better than just um, the browns here. So you, generally, a brown more like this color, more like a chocolatey brown would probably work better than um, a, a murky brown. If you wanted to with these, you could also do um, a glaze over the top. Um, sort of like a black or a brown glaze. Again, all you're doing is you're just layering paint colors so again the three to the four colors you just dob 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 your base color ideally you let it dry a little bit not completely dry um, so you let it dry do your next layer let it dry do your next layer if the paint is too wet it will just go together and make one totally separate color yep so that's just the main tips letting it dry in between so then the colors don't uh, yeah they homogenize and you get a whole new color so i'll say Goodbye, thanks for hanging out, and um, I'll see you next time. <music>